tell me your name? No. Why not? Are you trying to spoil the surprise? What surprise? The surprise your mother will get when she sees me. Oh, it's been a long time then. Oh, yes. Longer than I care to admit. Well then, old acquaintance. Uh, don't call me old. Oh, you've called yourself that several times so far. Um, if you won't tell me your name, will you tell me where you've been all those years you keep referring to? I have been everywhere. Hong Kong? Ten times. Naples? Ten times. Madagascar. Ten times. <laughs> you go everywhere ten times. No, only the places that I've liked nine times before. You follow the sea. Uh, it's more like the sea follows me. Every time I turn around, it's behind me, catching me up on the outgoing tide. The romance of the sea. Yes, that's it, exactly. It's in your blood, I suppose. Oh, yes. Give me a few drinks and I do albatross mm. imitations. Oh, it's good to be here. The place is so sturdy, solid. Good to know that it won't roll this way and that way. Uh, what are you doing in Collins for? Well, I came in on the Queen Mary. Now, didn't you hear all the whistles? Oh, I wondered what all that racket was. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you here? Well, some places are good for passing through. And this is one of them. And I thought it would be nice to see a friendly, familiar face. Well, I'm awfully glad that you did. Thank you. You're very nice. And every bit as beautiful as your mother. Thank you. Whomever you are. Well, then. Oh, that's mother. I'll send her in. Thank you. How was your nap? All right, thank you. There's someone to see you. Hmm. It's a surprise. A surprise? Yes? Hello, Liz. Hello, Liz. Hello, Jason. You remembered my name. For a moment, I thought you'd forgotten. No, I didn't forget. Well, then. My surprise is a complete success. You're the last person in the world I expected to see. Oh, I've been talking to your daughter. Have you? Yes, and she's every bit the great beauty you are, Liz. You must be very, very <laughs> proud. Does he always talk like that? Yes, as I remember. I haven't fully introduced myself to your daughter. Carolyn, this is Jason McGuire. Hello, Jason McGuire. Hello, Miss Carolyn Stoddard. Now, who is he? Someone I used to know. Used to know? Now, Liz, you've got to stop talking in the past. What are you doing here? Hi, Liz. Surely you should know. Well, now, it wouldn't hurt you to smile at me. Where are you staying? I'm glad you brought that up. Why? Well, I'm not really staying anywhere at the moment. Oh? And to be perfectly frank, I was rather hoping for an invitation from you. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm the most serious man alive, Liz. You should know that. <laughs> Why do there are so many, many empty rooms in Collingwood? It seems a shame to have so many empty, empty rooms. Jason, this is embarrassing. Well, of course it is. And the worst of it is you're making me feel unwelcome. And you don't want me to feel unwelcome, do you, Liz? I can't ask you to stay here. Oh, yes, you can, Liz. 
and you will. Mother, I'm terribly sorry to have caused this. Not your fault. I I've been reading meanings into things that don't exist. You must be careful, particularly now. Not to misinterpret what you see or hear. I'll try. A and Mother, I'm not like Uncle Roger. I'll make Jason feel welcome. No, that isn't necessary. What do you mean? Well, I, I don't want you to go out of your way. Oh, don't worry. It's no trouble at all. Well, I finally got David into bed. You know who found him? Who? Mr. McGuire. In the basement. In the basement? What was he doing there? Well, he said that he was looking for him. He, he knew that I was trying to find him. At least that's what David said. Do you believe it? No, not really. Especially since... Since what? Well, since he said that he was going up to his room and he wasn't going to look for David. And besides... What? Nothing. I I've got to stop thinking that everything that man says is a lie. Vicki, you must tell me. When I came downstairs, he was standing outside the drawing room doors listening. Vicki, that man is up to something. He said that he was looking for a book and he was waiting for the conversation in there to be finished. I don't believe that for a moment. It is possible. I don't like the man, Vicky. I don't trust him. Mother can say over and over again that he's an old friend of hers. But I don't believe even her. It's not like your mother to lie. I know, and that's why I don't trust him. Because he's making her lie. How do you know? Well, I can tell. She seems afraid of him. As though he has some hold over her. But that's not possible. Your mother is a very strong woman. She would let anyone do a thing like that to her. Then how do you explain it all? How do you explain his being here? And don't say it's because he's an old friend of hers. He isn't a friend. He's not a friend of hers and he's not a friend of mine. Mr. McGuire is not a friend of anyone. Of course. It's little things like these that give life that extra little zest. Things like these that make you say, life is worth living, so squeeze every ounce out of it. That's your whole philosophy. You may quote me. I'd like to ask you something. Please. I never got to know my father. I'm sorry. I've always wondered what he was like. I've seen old photographs of him and I used to ask questions about him, but I never got any answers, so I gave up asking. Well, I can understand why you didn't get any answers. I grew up knowing very little about him, except the bad part. You knew him. You spent time with him. And you want me to tell you all about him, hmm? If you would. Well, all right, you've heard, you've heard the bad part. Let me see if I can tell you about the other side of him. When did you last see him? Well, the last time your mother saw him. Eighteen years ago. I am not uh, sure that I have any idea where he is right now. What was he like? Well, maybe if I could tell you about his laugh, because that was the one thing that anyone who knew him would remember. <laughs> oh, when anything struck him funny, he would laugh the loudest and the hardest of anyone, till the tears ran right down his cheeks. He was the kind of a man men liked. <laughs> and as you probably know, uh, women liked him a great deal more. Yes, I... I know that. I was really shocked when he married your mother. Oh, they made a handsome couple. Him with his charm, she with her great beauty. But the sadness of it was that he wasn't a man for marriage. He had no idea what permanent meant. He was always under full sail. And the horizon was much more attractive than any woman could ever be. Is that why he left my mother? Well, now, I couldn't say that for sure, because... Well, he never talked to me about it, you see. Let's just say that was the kind of a man he was. You know, Paul Stoddard and I were very much alike. You see? 
Well, thank you very much for telling me about him. I really appreciate it. Well, if you'd like to hear any more, there are some stories I could tell. I'll let you know. Carolyn. I think you should know that were Paul started to see you now, he'd be very, very proud. I'd like to think that. No, Jason. The answer is no. But Liz, you're not being reasonable. I've already given you $500 to be exact. But that was for Willie. Well, you're keeping it. Well, only till he shows up. You were to pay that money to him to get rid of him. It's your responsibility to be sure that he's gone for good. Well, I realize that. And I know Willie is my responsibility. And believe me, you'll have no more trouble from him. Now, all I'm asking is for a few extra dollars. Now, surely they can't mean that much to you. How much do you want to clear out of here for good? Now, Liz, a man can't put a price on himself. I think you can. And you're going to sooner or later, so it might as well be now. Liz, why do you want to get rid of me? Now, I'm not causing you any trouble. You've caused me nothing but trouble. How can you say that? I was a great help to you 18 years ago. So we're back to that again. Why wasn't I? What would you have done without my help? I probably would have done much better. Now, how can you say that? Aren't you the least bit grateful? I stopped being grateful to you years ago. Oh, now, Liz. Liz, you don't mean a word you say. You've never brought me anything but unhappiness and grief. I wish we'd never met. Liz. Mother, what's going on? Do you always burst through a door like that? I heard you arguing from outside the door, and don't try to deny it. I heard it with my own ears. What did you hear? I heard you tell Jason you wish you'd never met him. That he's brought you nothing but grief and unhappiness. Why did you say that? What do you mean? And don't tell me it's none of my business. I have every right to know what's going on in my own house. I demand to know it. Demand? Yes, demand. Well, now, that's a very strong word. I mean it. I won't be put off any longer. Well, Mother. All right. Tell her. We were arguing about you. About me? Yes. About that night when Willie tried to bother you. I said I never wanted it to happen again. But Mother Willie's gone. He might never come back again. Just the same. I, I was very upset and I guess I let my temper get the best of me. And that's all you were talking about? Just what happened the other night? Yes. Now I think I'll go to my room. I have a slight headache. Mother... Carolyn, I'll talk to you later. What were you really talking about? Well, now your mother explained it to you. It was the truth. You were talking about more than Willie. Why? What makes you think so? I heard my mother say that you brought her nothing but grief and unhappiness for 18 years. Why 18 years? What happened 18 years ago? Well, that's just the length of time we've been friends. Besides, she didn't mean what she said anyway. She just lost her temper. You know, even close friends lose their tempers with each other. Occasionally. I don't believe you and my mother are friends at all. I think she's afraid of you. Afraid? Now, why should she be afraid? I don't know. But I intend to find out if it's the last thing I do. Carolyn? You know something? What? You'd be very wise to stop asking so many questions. Wise? Why? For your mother's sake. What about my mother? But if you don't stop asking so many questions, you could get her into trouble. Take my word for it. You could get her into serious trouble. Forgetting about Willie for a moment. What did you mean the other night? The other night? When you told me to stop asking so many questions, or I could get my mother into trouble. Yes. I recall saying that. 
What kind of trouble could I get her Serious into? trouble. That's no kind of answer. Well, it's the best answer I can give you. Why? Because I happen to be your mother's friend, and I'm protecting her. Protecting her? From what? That's all I can tell you, Carolyn. As your mother's friend. And I'm sure she wouldn't want me to tell you any more. Are you really such a good friend of my mother's? Well, I'd like to think that I am. And I'd like to be your friend, too, if you'd let me in. Would you? Well, why not? You're Elizabeth's daughter. And you're a very lovely girl. I wish we could be friends. I wish you could stop being so suspicious of I me. I know that my mother is in some kind of trouble. And you're the cause of it. Well, I'm sorry you believe that. I'm sorry you ever came here. And I'm even sorrier you brought Willie. I know that something is happening. Something weird. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I am not taking you into the company. All right, then, Elizabeth. Just exactly what explanation did you give to your banker when you told him you were opening up a bank account for me in Switzerland? I don't give my bankers explanations. I give them orders. And you allowed them to improvise their own explanations. I don't think that's wise. What they think is no difference, makes no difference to me. Well, it makes a great deal of difference to me. And for the record, I want there to be an explanation for the money you're giving me. There's an explanation, all right. Yes, please. And it's less kind to you than it is to me. I beg you to remember that. I don't need you to remind me. I'm afraid that you do. Jason, there is no reason for you to get involved in the business or, or offer any kind of explanation. Because you won't be here that long. The length of my stay, dear Liz, depends, as it always has, upon the degree of your cooperation. But you can't stay here indefinitely. And if that's what you want, why do you constantly frustrate the arrangements that might lead to my departure? Because your arrangements seem to exist of unending succession of demands. There's got to be an end to it. There's got to be. Oh, no, no, Liz, please, dear, dear. I can't bear to see you upset like this. Can't you just leave me alone? But I can't, dear. I'm much too fond of you for that. Please don't say those things. But, Liz, I am. <laughs> I've always been. No. I can't bear to see you upset like this. It pains me. It truly does. So why don't you just make the necessary arrangements for me to have an office at the cannery and all will be well. See, all suspicion and tension will be at an end and life at Collinwood will be once more uh, pleasant and relaxed. Mother, Mrs. Johnson wants... Mrs. Johnson wants to know if she should go ahead with the ordering for next week. Yes, tell her to go ahead. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. A little tired, perhaps. I was just telling her that she works herself far too hard. Those lovely shoulders are made to bear far too heavy a burden. But I intend to do all that I can to lighten the load. Mother, are you sure you're feeling all right? Oh, of course. Just tell Mrs. Johnson I'll be with her in a few minutes. There are some things I want to discuss with her. All right. gets worse every time I see him with my mother. I loathe the man so much I can hardly stand it. What was he doing? It, it wasn't so much what he was doing, it, it was the way he was doing it. What do you mean? Well, that sticky, sweet manner, that insinuating tone of voice, the, the contempt behind it all. Contempt? Don't tell me you don't feel it. Everything he does is tinged with it, his smile, his whole manner. Simply the way he spoke to my mother this morning. The mockery that was behind it. Good afternoon, ladies. Carolyn, dear, could you tell me where I might find your mother? No, I can't. Vicky, could you? But Vicky doesn't know either. Well, thank you very much for your help. Mr. McGuire. Jason, Carolyn, dear. Jason. 
Mr. McGuire, I hate to keep asking this question, but I haven't yet received a satisfactory answer. And what question might that be? How long do you intend to stay at Collingwood? Well, now, aren't you asking the wrong person? After all, I'm here at your mother's invitation. You're probably right. This is something I should be discussing with her. Yes, and if you're interested, um, I can give you some indication as to her response. That won't be necessary. You see, just this morning, I, uh, well, I indicated that I might be leaving. Oh. And her response was, well, really, quite touching. I doubt that. Well, then, that the facts speak for themselves. Am I supposed to believe that my mother asked you to stay on here? Oh, not only asked me to stay on, but to help her. Help her? Yes, with the business. I don't believe it. Well, I'd love to stay here and discuss it with you, Carolyn, but the first day on the job, you know, can wear a man down very easily. Y you work today? A at the cannery? Well, I had no other choice. Your mother asked me to. And you really shouldn't be so surprised, Carolyn. After all, your mother and I are very old and close friends. Very, very close. <laughs> it's almost getting to be like old times before she met your father. We were even closer then, you know. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, as you like. But you win. In time. Carolyn, I'll never believe it. Never. I see, Frank. Well, well, when will you be able to see the judge? There won't be any... No, 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 no. There won't be any... Uh, Contest. Well, I know there won't because no one has seen Paul Stoddard in all the years he's been away from here. I see. Well, when you do speak to the judge, will you ask him how soon he can push the final decree through? I know I've waited 18 years, but I want it done immediately. Thank you, Frank. You are in a rush. Oh, no, I, I didn't know you were there. You're the picture of the impatient bride. Don't be facetious. What's the big rush, Mother? Afraid you'll lose the bridegroom? Somebody might steal him away. Carolyn, please don't be rude. Jason is the ideal person for a honeymoon around the world. He's been everywhere. Ten times, I think he said. It could be a very educational experience. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing it to yourself? Mother, I can't get it through my head that you're actually going to marry this man. Tell me I'm dreaming. Tell me it's, it's a lie or a joke. But don't tell me it's true. I'm going to marry Jason McGuire. And there is nothing you or anybody else can do about it. I'll do something to stop it. What can you do? I don't know. No one seems to realize that I have the right to live my life as I see fit. Mother, I don't want to interfere with your life. I only want to help you. Carolyn, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But I am not a woman given to making foolish decisions. Mother, I'd like nothing more than to see you married. Happy. Whatever it is that will give you a full life. You should have everything you've been deprived of all these years. But why him? Because he's the man I choose. Mother, you didn't choose him. He chose you. That's not so. He talked and cajoled you into it. He's forcing you to do something you wouldn't do, couldn't do under ordinary circumstances. I'm doing this of my own free will. Mother, I know you too well for that. You're doing this for some other reason. A reason I intend to find. There is no reason. Yesterday you were positive you find the answer down in the basement. Well, you didn't. You just poked around among the dust of 18 years and found nothing. I know. I can never apologize enough. 
You have apologized enough, and I don't want to go on with this argument. Mother, I simply can't understand what it is about Jason McGuire that makes you want to marry him. I want to know what those endearing qualities are that make you think he's the ideal husband for you and the ideal stepfather for me. Why do you hate him so? Because he's sly and deceitful. And he has that ever-present smile on his face, that leering, smirking smile. It's a mask. But there's something else, something even more important. What is it? I've never seen you display even one ounce of genuine fondness or affection for him. I don't believe you feel anything for him at all. Well, you're wrong. Marriage is a special arrangement for two people who feel very special emotions about each other. Is this true of you? Oh, I don't want to go on with this conversation. Well, I do. It's become my very favorite subject. There's one answer I'd like to hear from you. I think I've answered enough questions. Do you love him? If you don't answer me, I'll take it to mean that you don't and that he's forcing you. Do you love him? Yes, yes, I love him. I don't believe you. You've got to believe me. I'm tired of everybody trying to live my own life for me. And I don't see you doing much with your life. Oh, I'll do something about my life. You can bet on that. You're something else. I mean, you are something else. You know it, Buzz. You know it. I'm thirsty. Hey, where are you putting all this stuff? I don't know. But wherever it is, I got room for more. Baby, I'm out of bread. Oh, don't worry about that. I got more money than you'll ever see. That's not much. <laughs> Two stingers. No, no. I'm staying with beer. She's loaded. We both are. Joe, I, I'm afraid for her riding around on those motorcycles. I wish I could get her home. You want me to go over and try and split them up? No, no. She'll just make a scene out of it. Two more horsepower. Uh, to louder exhaust. <laughs> Hey, Buzz! They're all my friends over there. Come on! Who needs it? They ain't worth much, like you said. Oh, come on! Hi, Vicky and Joey. Hello. Buzz, this is my very best friend, Vicky. Vicky, I want you to meet Buzz. What do you say, Vicky? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mr. Joe Haskell. Who is approximately the greatest fisherman in Collinsport? I've seen you, man. Yeah, and I've heard you. <laughs> oh, I just had the most wonderful day I've ever had. We've been up and down every road, street, across every field, along the beaches. It was living buzz, wasn't it? Hey, gas, man, a gas. <laughs> hey, Vicky, you want to go for a ride on the cycle? No, thanks. Oh, sure you do. Come on, Buzz, take it for a ride. Mm. A fast one. Come on, kid, sure. No, thanks. I'd rather stay here. Come on. She said she'd rather stay here. She'll be safe with me. Well, I think she prefers the safety of sitting in that chair. Oh. Well, if that's the kind of safety and security you want, you can have it. But I think I've discovered a way of life where those words don't count. Party begins again! Hey! It's Mommy! You 
know what time it is. It's three o'clock in the morning. Well, it's about time. Hey, I want you to meet my man. A real man. His name is Bud. Hi, Mommy. He liked you. Because he loved me already. You're drunk. Hey, Mommy says you're drunk. Ooh. Mommy knows best. You better get out of here. I mean, like, wait a minute now, Mrs. Stoddard. Mrs. Stoddard? Mrs. Stoddard? Why are you calling her Mrs. Stoddard? It's Mrs. McGuire. What are you talking? That's my mommy's brand new name. I've been telling you all day that my mommy was going to get married. And Mrs. McGuire is going to be her brand new name because she's marrying some guy named McGuire. Figure, so how come you're calling her that now? Because I wanted to get used to it. I wanted to know how it feels to be Mrs. Jason McGuire. I wanted to be proud of the name. You are proud of it, aren't you? Mrs. McGuire. What's the matter, Mrs. McGuire? Did you like your new name? Mrs. McGuire, Mrs. McGuire, Mrs. McGuire. See, you found love, Mrs. McGuire. Well, so have I. I can't set the date. I haven't heard anything definite from my lawyers. Maybe you didn't, but I did. <laughs> really, Liz, you should make a greater effort. You talked to Mr. Garner? Yes. And what he had to say to me was most gratifying. Now, if my arithmetic is correct, a suitable date would be two weeks from today. Two weeks? Yes, it's a pity we have to wait so long, but it can't be helped. Well, that's hardly enough time. I, I have things to do. Well, I'm sure you'll find time to do them. Now, why don't we make the announcement at the first opportunity? Two weeks. I, I can't possibly. Now, Liz. Please, Jason. <laughs> you are sky high. <laughs> Your daughter seems to be on an extended celebration in anticipation of the happy event. I prefer you didn't discuss my daughter with me. They're going to be married. That's the way they want it. Oh, it is, it is. My mother's been pining away with passion, yay, these long years. And now the story is about to have its own happy ending. Isn't that right, Mother? Carolyn, I think you should go to your room. Uh, Liz, perhaps Carolyn would be interested in hearing about our decision. Decision? Yes, you see, your mother and I have finally decided on a date for the wedding. Oh? Jason, I hardly think this is the time to bring that up. The date will be two weeks from today. Two weeks? But does that surprise you, Carolyn? Why, that's splendid. Obviously, you've been celebrating something, and I thought we might as well give you something to celebrate about. That's right. Did you know that's what we were celebrating? A coming marriage? Is that what it was? Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, go on, let's tell them you believe me. Tell them you agree with me. We shouldn't be secret about it. Jason, That's please. right, Mother. Why be secret? Carolyn, I told you to go to your room. You want to come, Buzz? You like weddings? Why don't you come? I think I gotta be out of town that day. Or I got an even better idea. I love weddings. Especially my own. Why don't we get married, Buzz? Hey! You and me. Yeah. Carol, that's enough. How about it, Buzz? I want to be a bride. Two weeks from today. You and me. I'm the bride and you're the groom. Right? Carolyn, please be serious. What makes you think I'm not? Don't forget, Buzz. Two weeks from today. You and me, bride and groom.
Pardon me. I was hoping I could have a minute with you. I'm not buying any advice today, Jason. I've already had it from all the local experts. Ah, yes, but not the kind I offer. The fatherly kind. How dare you use that term with me? You know I'll never accept you as that. Oh, not now, understandably. But later on, you will. Never! Hey, look at that temper. Oh, you're Paul Stoddard's daughter, all right. And it's like Paul Stoddard that you're acting. What does that mean? I mean, it's the same kind of headstrong thing that made him run away from here 18 years ago. And now it's taken hold of you. <laughs> and it's making you do the very same thing. A chip off the old block. Hooray for me! No. No, Carolyn, I can't cheer you now. Not for what you're doing. Paul Stoddard's strong, thick-headedness caused your mother 18 years of suffering, humiliation, and doubts about herself as a woman. What a sad comment it is that now her daughter, with her inherited thick-headedness, should cause the same kind of pain and add to it the doubts she'll now have about herself as a mother. Oh, I tell you, it makes me feel a little sick. I'm glad to see that something makes you sick. Carolyn, why do you resent me so? That's too mild a word to describe the way I feel about you, Jason. But we have one thing in common. We're both concerned about your mother's welfare. I know I'm concerned about my mother's welfare, but I have a pretty good idea what it is you're concerned about. Well, you see, Carolyn, you're prejudging me without the benefit of a proper trial. I'm really a nice guy, as I think time will prove. But you've got to give me that time. Oh, with me around here, I... Well, I think things will be very pleasant. I'm only trying to fill the gap your father left. I want you to have all the attention you deserve. The fatherly kind of attention. Now you're making me sick. Is that so? Well, let me tell you something, Carolyn. This wedding will go on in spite of you and your efforts to stop it. Now, why don't you knock it off? And give everyone a break. A chance for a little happiness. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you very much. Roger. Roger. Vicky, have you seen Roger? He just went into town a few minutes ago. Oh dear, that means I won't be able to get him for another half hour. Is there anything I can do? No, there isn't anything anybody can do. Mrs. Stoddard, what is it? It's Carolyn. I just had a call from the sheriff. She's not hurt, is she? Outside of a very badly sprained wrist, she's all right. She's been arrested and taken into custody. What happened? Oh, Vicky, it's terrible. What did she do? She almost killed a woman. Do you really think it would help if I went to get her? Yes, I do. Do you think it would help remind her how much I love her? Yes, yes. Will you drive me there? I will. I, I don't think I can do it. Oh, oh, yes, you can. I know that you can.
bored waiting. Why can't you just lock me up for the night? Because someone is coming to get you. Someone. Meaning my Uncle Roger. Spare me his brand of disapproval, if you please. I'd rather be locked up. I don't think you should be spared anything after what you did tonight. Can I at least go someplace and lie down for a while? Cracking up your car and getting your life saved can be pretty exhausting, you know. There's an empty cell back there. Would you like that? Why not? Maybe that's where I'll wind up anyway. If I didn't have more respect for your mother, that's where I would have put you in the first place. Respect? Mister, are you misinformed? All right, now that's enough of that. She doesn't care where I am or what happens to me. You wouldn't say that if you heard her on the telephone a little while ago. She was plenty scared. Of what? That my almost untimely demise almost forced a postponement of her wedding? She was scared because something worse might have happened to you. And she was worried because you're in trouble. Plenty of trouble. She couldn't care less. Which way is my cell? If I'm asleep when my uncle comes, tell him to come back after breakfast. And tell him to tell my mother that she doesn't have a worry in the world. I'm very tired and expect to have a very sound sleep. What are you doing here? I came to take you home. You came yourself? Vicky drove me. She's waiting outside. I, I haven't driven in quite a while. I can't believe it. Well, I couldn't let you stay here all night. Uncle Roger could have come. No, I wanted to come. I was worried about you. Well, didn't the sheriff tell you it was just a sprained wrist? Yes, but I wanted to see for myself. I, I don't know what to say. Well, we can talk when we get home. Home? Yes. Are you ready? Why did you leave Collinwood tonight, Mother? After 18 years? Why? Why did he come and get you? This isn't the first time I've been in trouble. You never came before. Why is this so different? Because I... I wanted you to know how much I care about you. Are you sure? But doesn't this prove it? Believe me. It wasn't easy. It was difficult. Very difficult. But it had to happen sooner or later. What are you trying to say? What's the difference whether you leave Collinwood tonight or a week from now? I left so I could come and take you home. Have you forgotten why you never left before? No, I haven't forgotten. You never left before because of my father. When he went away, you shut yourself up at Collinwood. I never should have done that. But now you can leave because he doesn't mean anything to you anymore. What are you saying? You can forget all about my father now, can't you, Mother? Now that you're about to get married again. Carolyn, believe me. The only reason I left tonight was because of you. You left because staying didn't have any meaning for you anymore. That's not true. It is true. My father doesn't mean anything to you, and neither do I. Oh, Carolyn, how can I prove to you that I love you? I don't want you to love me. I want you to leave me alone. Mr. Patterson? I want to go back to that cell. No, I came to get you. I almost believe that. Take me back to that cell. I'm not going home. Yes, you are. Your mother has come for you and you're going to go with her. You'll be notified if there's a hearing you have to attend. I'm not going with her. Now, you get out of here and go with your mother. Or I'm going to add disorderly conduct to your charges. That won't be necessary. Should be all right. Yes, I'll be all right. My mother was worried about me. 
Or she wanted to show that she was. Sorry, Mother. It didn't work. <laughs> I suppose you think it's a diary, a chronicle of my every act for the last 20 years. Maybe. I suppose you expected to uh, find something in here that would prevent me from marrying your mother this evening. I don't know if it's written in that book, Jason, but I know it exists. Oh? And if it does exist, do you think I'm fool enough to write it down? Come on now, Carolyn. You must give me credit for more intelligence than that. I don't give you credit for being anything but a fake. Well, now that, I'm afraid, is a major mistake. Because, as you now know, I am only all too real. And for an example, my marriage to your mother this evening will be quite real. No, it won't be. Because you'll be forcing her into it. And the fact that she will be Mrs. Jason McGuire will also be quite real. Don't make me sick. And my prerogatives as her husband will also be quite real, and I intend to exercise them to the fullest. We'll see about that. Ah, yes, we will. Would you like a little sampling of it right now? What do you mean? Well, now. I expected you to be married today to the worthy Mr. Buzz. It's no business of yours whether I do or don't. Ah, but it is, Carolyn. I fail to see how. Because I expect you to get married and leave Collinwood. Are you telling me to leave my own house? I'm telling you to leave my house. Yours? Exactly. This house belongs to my mother. This house belongs to Mrs. Maguire, and I am Mr. Maguire. And I'm telling you in so many words to get out. Now, is that clear enough? I will not be thrown out of my own house. I'm afraid it's a little bit late for you to have a voice in the decision. Oh, see about that. Now, just how long did you think you could push me around? Hmm? Ever since I got here, I've had nothing out of you. Nothing but insults and insinuations. And all of it deserved. I've done my best to get along with you. The only way we can get along is for you to leave. Yes, for one of us to leave, and I'm afraid you're elected. Now I want you out of this house tonight. Tonight? Yes. And don't make the mistake of not taking me seriously. What will you do if, if I don't go? Why then I'll ask Mrs. McGuire to make the request personally. She'd never do it. No. You thought you'd never allow me into Collinwood, didn't you? And yet I'm here. And then you thought she'd never marry me, marry me, didn't you? But she is. <laughs> you think she won't ask you to leave? How oh, ridiculous. I know she wouldn't. Because of her love and loyalty to me, she can deny me nothing. Love? Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me. I must straighten out my things, and then I must dress. Because I'm getting married, you know. Jason, that will never happen. Stick around for a few hours. Oh, and you meanwhile, you might utilize the time to pack up your own things. And now, will you excuse me? I do need a moment alone, so that I can contemplate the happiness I have to look forward to. Oh, and Carolyn, by the way, no doubt the wedding will be too moving for words. So I'll say it now. Say what? Goodbye. <laughs> I thought you'd gone out. I'm back. Well, your mother would be happy to see you. As, of course, I am. I didn't know there would be anyone outside the family. Mr. Devlin is here because I invited him. He seems to persist in the notion that the wedding will not take place, and I thought this was one way of convincing him. I certainly hope so. Ah, the judge. That means we can start on time. 
I'm sure you will have other plans later on. Yes, I have plans. Uh, good evening. Well, I see we're almost all assembled. Ah, Roger. How are you, Judge? I'm fine, thank you. We haven't seen you at the club lately. And this must be the group. Yes. A pleasure, Mr. McGuire. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Devlin, I didn't expect to see you. Oh, I stray from the straight and narrow every once in a while. Uh, yes. Hello, Carolyn. Hello. How pretty you have grown. Thank you. Well, uh, where is the bride? Where is my dear Elizabeth? She'll be right down. Now, you must be Miss Winters. Yes, how do you do? Fine, thank you. And I must not leave without getting your signature as witness. We want this to be legal, don't we? Yes. Can I offer you a drink, Judge? Oh, thank you. Carol. Oh, don't look so surprised, Vicky. You don't think I'd miss my mother's wedding? No, of course not. Vicky, are you sure that uh, Liz doesn't want you to help her with something? She wanted me to tell everyone that she'd be down in a minute. And what a beautiful bride she will be. I remember when she married Paul Stoddard in this very room. People gasped when she came through the door. She was so beautiful. And she still is. Oh, there was a fine crowd here that day. And not a murmur among them as they stood looking toward the door, waiting. Elizabeth. I'm sorry if I've kept you all waiting. Merely for 20 years, my dear, and it was worth every one of them. Don't you think so, Judge? I have fought so for years. Carol. Hello, Mother. I'm so glad you could be here. I knew you would be. Burke, I see you decided to come. Yes. We may as well start. Yes, I think we may as well. You join me, Elizabeth? Uh, uh, Judge, uh, where do you want us to start? Well, since this is an informal wedding, uh, we will eliminate the preliminaries. If you were two, will stand in front of me. Here. Right. Well, yes. By me. I'll ask the usual questions and you'll give the usual answers. Then, Jason, you'll slip on the ring and after a few minutes it'll all be over. Ah, no. It'll be the beginning of our happiness. Happiness? Now, if you will just join hands. Do you, Elizabeth Stoddard, take this man Jason McGuire, to be your lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and in health until death do you part. Yes. Answer, I do, dear. Answer? Say simply, I do. I... I... Liz? I know. Liz? No, no, I can't. Oh, leave her alone. Wait, Elizabeth. What is it? I killed Paul Stoddard, and that man was my accomplice. 